Hey, today we're going to be installing an inverter in our Winnebago Micro Mini 1808 FBS. And uh, <clears throat> it's in a project that I've been wanting to do it for a long time. So when we're traveling and we're not plugged into shore power or a generator, uh, we want to be able to power some of the plugs in the camper. So the, mainly our TV set, maybe a plug for a laptop or something like that. Uh, what we chose is an inverter charger, which will replace the converter in our camper. And I'll show you how, how I'm going to do that. Really quickly touch the base on why we might want an inverter in the camper. And it, it's to me, it's, um, it's something that I wish came from the factory, but it doesn't allows us to run our appliances that we want to run when we're dry camping. So for instance, a TV set or a laptop. Okay, so here's the inverter I chose for my installation. It's a, it's a Xantrix XC1000. So the XC stands for, um, it's, an, a, it's a charger as well as an inverter, and the 1000 is 1000 watts. So again, I, I chose a thousand watts for my application because it, it um, makes the most sense for my camper where I'm not going to be using over a thousand watts and it, it fits my battery bank sizing uh, pretty well. So on the back side of this, um, there is an AC input uh, that comes from the distribution, the camper's distribution panel. There's an AC output that goes to a new distribution panel that I'll be installing that um, will wire the in, uh, inverted circuit that I want to wire. Um, and then here's uh, the a, the DC positive and negative terminals going right here. And then here's a communication port that allows me to install a remote control that is um, that will be pretty much exactly what is on the top of this. And then I can locate that somewhere conveniently inside the camper. All right, let's take a look at this schematic that I put together here. This is not a wiring diagram of the camper. It's just basically how I'm going to get this inverter installed with the existing um, electrical system. So the main heart of the, the camper's electrical system is this um, converter AC dis uh, DC distribution panel. So it's got, it gets power from shore uh, when the camper is plugged in and that's where you have your breakers, your AC breakers and your uh, DC distribution right above that. And then on the side, there's usually a converter. In some campers, this converter part is separate from this panel, uh, but it, it works in the same way. And uh, this is just showing how I'm going to pull power from my uh, distribution panel down to my inverter to power my inverter. And then here's my connections to my batteries, uh, a ground, and then the AC out from the inverter to my um, circuit that's going to power my um, plugs and things like that. All right, here's all the stuff that we need to <laughs> install the inverter with. There's quite a bit, right? So there's AC stuff here, dropping things on the floor. Um, I have some Romex here that's um, going to connect my inverter to my AC panel. Um, and some Romex to run my circuit that I want to invert. A little box, a handy box for uh, that I use as a junction box. Um, and then over here is the DC stuff. So as you can see, these uh, DC cables are pretty ginormous. And the reason for that is because they're pulling a lot of uh, amperage from that battery bank. And you want this run to the battery bank from the inverter to be as short as possible. So that's kind of a challenge um, I I found when I was kind of looking at where to install it in this camper. And I'll show you where I installed it. But. All right, so this is my WF, uh, WFCO load center. I took the cover off it. Make sure your power is off. You're not, your camper is not plugged in before you take this thing off. Because otherwise uh, the AC circuits will be live. Um, don't pl don't have it plugged in a generator or your house or shore power. So I just wanted to kind of show you because you can see it here. Here's the converter. Here's the DC distribution. Here's the AC distribution. So basically all we're going to modify here is we're going to disconnect this converter. We're going to tuck these wires down in under here. And then um, the circuit that we want to invert is actually this uh, 15 amp circuit here. So we're just going to pull that wire off, pull it out the back. And then that's when I'm going to route it down to the inverter. Um, this 15 amp circuit right here uh, powers the converter and it also powers my fridge. 
So when I take the wire out of this 15 amp, I'm going to put the fridge over here on this 15 amp. That frees up this 15 amp uh, breaker to take it out, and I have a 30 amp to go in here. Then I'm going to put in wiring from the 30 amp down to the inverter to power the inverter. So when there's power to these AC circuits, like when it's plugged into shore power, then my inverter will have power. All right, so this is where I decided to install the inverter. It's probably one of the, uh, in this camper, there weren't a whole lot of choices. So um, under here in the basement, um, I have a little area that's kind of a cubby right here where I'm gonna just partition it off uh, just for the inverter. And I put this backer board on here because a lot of the veneers and things, they make these uh, very thin and light for uh, so they don't weigh a lot um, to weigh down the camper. but. I just put an extra backer board on here with some OSB so that this uh, I can mount that inverter on here. Uh, the nice thing is that uh, right the choice of having it right here is nice because the distribution panel that I was showing you earlier is just on the other side of this. And here's a channel that was already here from the factory. I'm just going to run the Romex under there. Then drill through the hole for the uh, our, uh, hole in the floor here for the uh, DC cable to go down uh, because the battery bank is just a few feet away right there um, and then I'll put that DC fuse um, somewhere close to the battery bank okay uh, we're here inside the camper I pulled the distribution panel converter uh, unit out so I can get to the wiring in the back and I was showing you previously on that I wanted to <clears throat> the the circuit that I was going to invert was tied to that 15 amp breaker um, I wanted to pull that out of this panel. So here it is right here. Um, I did pull this out. So this Romex here is uh, basically powering the GFI circuit in the camera. That's all the plugs and everything. Um, this is what I want to invert. So here's the white Romex that I uh, put, was pushing through uh, in the basement. So I have these, these two guys I'm going to combine together into a little trans, um, a junction box that I'm going to actually put down in there so, uh, somewhere, screw down into the floor there and, and uh, basically splice these guys together. So this, this circuit will no longer be powered by this um, panel. It'll be powered by the new distribution panel that I showed you next to the inverter in the basement. Also, here's the orange Romex I pulled in from the basement and fed it into this panel where I'm going to attach it to the 30 amp circuit that's going to power the inverter. Okay, so I got the junction box in there. It's a little tight, but it does extend the GFI circuit, uh, the Romex, all the way down to the inverter now. So I took it off of this panel. So at this point, I can put the uh, distribution panel back into its spot. Okay, so I've finished up the wiring for the uh, DC side, got everything kind of tucked in and routed the way I want it. Um, so as I showed you before, I got my AC side all wired in. Um, the AC out from the inverter goes to my sub panel here, and then um, this is only controlling one circuit. It's my GFI circuit that does all the plugs in the camper. And it goes out here, goes back into the camper to power that circuit. So um, my AC positive, our DC positive negative comes out of the inverter. I have a, um, um, an on off switch or a cutoff switch for the positive side. Um, ground cable that comes off of here. Routed it down through the floor underneath the camper. And came out here. My negative battery cable, got it tied in here to my, uh, I have a six volt, two six volt batteries, um, on one on the negative terminal and one on the positive over here. And so my fuse, what I decided to do for the uh, fuse is do a terminal fuse. Um, this is something that um, is a, I think is like, to me it made the, mo the most sense because this fuse should be as close to the battery as possible to protect this, this, uh, this positive cable thing. So having it right there just made the most sense to me. Um, this is like a marine grade uh, terminal fuse that works great for this situation. So that's what I did for that. 
And let's check out and see if we can power up the inverter and see what happens. It's, so right now the, the camper is not plugged into shore power um, or anything like that. So it's just on battery. And uh, I turn on the inverter. Now if you can see that, what it's doing is it's booting up. And I'll show you in a minute, I have this uh, control panel inside the camper. It'll show it a little better since this is sideways. It doesn't really show very well. All right, so, so here's the, uh, the uh, Xantrix remote control panel. Basically the same exact the uh, same exact screen and buttons as what's on the outer, but <clears throat> right here, it's a little battery. S signal means it's on battery right now since the inverter is on. Um, and uh, it's inverting that circuit. So if we take a look at that, what it shows is the battery is powering the load. It shows the current battery voltage at 13.1 volts or 13 volts and the load being zero. So one of my plug circuits that I have is the TV. Let's go ahead and fire that up and see what we got. So it's on battery right now. It should power up uh, since it's plugged into um, a plug circuit that's being inverted by the inverter. Let's see what we got here. Cool. So it looks like it's coming on and I think it's it's all hooked into my Roku. So right on. So everything's working great. So this is running off as a 120 volt um, TV and Roku um, device plugged into the plug uh, being inverted by the inverter that's running off, that's taking power off the battery bank. So um, now that I have the TV on, we can come here and take a look at things. Uh, battery voltage drops slightly. This load says zero, but I, I, I think it's probably going to um, detect that and refresh on a regular basis. Probably, I think it's probably going to hover around 30, 40 watts or something, which is really low since the TV doesn't use much energy. So the nice thing about this is I, I like I said, I'm burn one circuit. I can actually run things off of this plug here. Um, the plug that's on the side here and um, I can, it'll also invert this plug here. So that's all on the same circuit. So that's pretty slick. Now I'm gonna plug it into shore power. So I'm going to turn off the inverter. So I plugged in the camper to shore power. The control panel here is just, um, the inverter has a built-in transfer switch. And there it's updated. So what this is showing is shore power here. It's going to a conversion process to convert to 12 volt to charge the battery. It's currently in bulk mode at 14 um, volts to the battery bank. So it's bypassing the inversion process, sending shore power directly to the load circuit, the circuit that I'm inverting. So there you go. So this updated to show that it's on shore power. And if I were to unplug the camper, then it would turn off completely um, until I turn on the switch. The nice thing about this is that you can actually have the inverter process off and just plug the the camper into shore power and it'll automatically charge. So you don't need to do anything. It just automatically charges regardless. So you need to enable that. There's a lot of settings in here that you can modify, but uh, that's it. And if there's any questions about the install, just let me know. Otherwise, um, hope hopefully this video was helpful.